this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and today we're going to do a smackdown between two high-end metal body phones. We have the new iPhone 5S here and we have the incumbent, the HTC One. One running iOS 7, the other one running Android 4.2 Jelly Bean and we're going to look at them now. So here we have two glorious, beautiful metal bodied phones, aluminum, aluminum with polycarbonate fill in the case of the HTC One. Uh, Arguably two of the most attractive phones that are on the market right now, particularly for those of you who like metal and higher end materials. HTC was one of the first Android phone manufacturers to say, hey, everybody keeps saying the iPhone is really great because it has a metal body. So they said, well, what if we do the same thing? Brilliant idea. Well received. First, here is our iPhone 5S in space gray, available now but still hard to find because it just launched here at the end of September 2013. Soon you'll be able to find it in your choice of space gray, which is this model, silver or white, whichever you want to call it, which is light silver with white trim on it, or the new gold, which is kind of like champagne. Right here we have our HTC One, obviously in the silver color, generally speaking available in silver or black on most carriers. Beautiful big display right here, lovely design. Nice looking on the back too. And depending on your carrier, you might also be able to get it in a zingy blue or a pretty bright red as well. Who knows, maybe a gold is gonna be coming for this guy too. Both phones start at $199 on contract. Now that's the interesting thing because we have different storage capacities available here. For, for your $199, you're going to get a 16 gig iPhone versus a 32 gig HTC One. Depending on your carrier or whether you go with the Unlocked Developer Edition, you might be able to get a 64 gig in the HTC One as well. Neither of these has expandable storage. That is no micro SD card slot. So I suggest in either case, get the one that has as much capacity as you think you're actually going to need. If you carry around a lot of videos particularly, or a huge, huge music library that you really want to have on your phone, obviously you need a lot of space. If you don't do that, then you don't need as much space. If you love games, high quality games are about a gig a piece now. So keep that in mind. Next important difference here, the size difference. I think that this is going to be one of the most important things, you're either going to be uh, one of those people that says can't get big enough, bigger is better, which is a trend right now in a lot of Android smartphones. You're going to say, I want something that's small and easy to hold, easy to fit in my pocket, friendly to my hand size, especially if you have smaller hands. Look at the difference in size here. Obviously quite different. Also, the weight is different. The HTC One weighs one ounce more. Now, one ounce isn't a lot, but when you're talking about 3.95 to 5.04 ounces, you'll notice the difference. Uh, neither of these is a pocket dragger, though. Both of these have gorgeous IPS displays, obviously different operating systems, so what you're going to see here looks different. If we go for the icon drawer, you're going to see a little bit more similarity there in the way the UI is presented. 1920 by 1080 full HD display on our HTC One. It is a 4.7 inch display. The iPhone is still as ever a 4 inch retina display. I, Apple started the whole craze for super high resolution, high density displays and they haven't really changed the game much. So competitors are going crazy, going for bigger displays and going for even higher pixel densities. Uh, now that said, about around little right around the iPhone 5S is the iPhone 5, the iPhone 5C. When you're talking the 320s for pixel density, that is the limit of what most humans can actually see with and not discern individual pixels anymore. So that's kind of the sweet spot. That's why Apple called it the retina display. Some of these phones, like even our HTC here, they're pushing into the 400s. So that's lovely, but unless you have super special eyes or you had Jason Giambi eye surgery, you're, you're probably not going to really notice any difference in apparent sharpness between these two. Also, the bigger the screen, the more pixels that you need to fill it, obviously, to keep up that display quality. Honestly, display quality, it's neck and neck here. Both lovely displays, very bright, good viewing angles, both IPS viewing angles, so you can see them off angle just fine, which is always important if you're going to be picking up a phone, using it an off angle, looking at it after pulling it out of your pocket, that kind of thing. Both get very bright. Both are very outdoor viewable and they have an advantage over AMOLED displays in that respect, which generally tend to fade out in direct sunlight. Both have excellent contrast ratios. So honestly, in terms of quality, they're the same. Obviously, HTC One has a bigger display. If you'd like a bigger display, who doesn't? Especially if you tend to read a lot of web pages that are desktop formatted, not mobilized. And if you watch a lot of videos, it's much more enjoyable, obviously, on the bigger screen. If you don't do so much of that, then, well, it probably doesn't matter as much to you.
The next point of difference in it that I think is extremely significant because honestly, I have not seen many people care as much about a mobile operating system as anything else. Mac versus Windows, a lot of people said they're all good, I can use either one, but when it comes to Android versus iOS, you people are rabid. So if you have a preference, you know who you are, probably nothing is going to change that for you unless you've actually been unhappy with your operating system of choice as of late. If you've been dissatisfied with iOS, bored with it, whatever, or Android, well, that's a different story. They are fundamentally similar, yet different. Funny thing, that, right? Uh, the iPhone, as ever, still, though iOS 7 did a big remake of the, the look and feel of the operating system, is still a palette of icons. There it is. There you have it. There's no widgets. There's no little notifications on the screen in, t in the form of floating bubbles or anything like that. Here with our HTC, you can see we have all sorts of widgets here. You can put shortcuts on there, all that kind of thing. Which suits you more? That's up to you. When it comes to notifications, iOS has grown up with iOS 7. Finally, we have more serious pull-down notifications over here. Not that I have a whole lot going on at the moment, but right there, all sorts of notifications. Same thing with HTC right there. You've got shortcuts to your settings up there on the top, too. Aha, uh -huh, with Apple, now they brought those to the bottom. So you have quick access to your wireless radios, playback controls, a couple of applications, flashlight function, your camera. You get the idea. Now, for our particular HTC One, this is the AT&T model. We also have the AT&T iPhone. Actually, we have very minimal, minimal access to settings up here. We have to actually go to full settings to get to anything. So this is a bit more expedient if you want instant wireless control to your radios. Now, once the HTC gets the upright upgrade to Android 4.3, well, then we might actually see some more settings pop in like we did see on our Verizon version out of the box. In terms of fluidity and speed of the operating system, the HTC One is flawlessly fast. It's just wonderful, very responsive phone to use, and it has a 1.7 gigahertz quad core Qualcomm Snapdragon 600 CPU with two gigs of RAM. Now, Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 is the new king on the block, just starting to come out now in phones. So this is no longer the top of the line processor, but this guy's been out since late spring, so that's okay. Things just move ahead that quickly. Now, our iPhone here has just as far as we know a 1.3 gigahertz clock speed cpu but it's apple's new a7 64-bit cpu still dual core multi-core power vr graphics but it just trounces the htc on synthetic benchmarks now experientially ios is always very fast and smooth because apple optimizes the hardware they control both the hardware and the software here so there's never a problem with the applications launch quickly they do more launch more quickly on the 5s and on the previous five but still both feel like very fast phones, however, synthetic benchmarks, and that, that bodes for what you can do, say, for particularly for 3D gaming in the future, the iPhone 5S pulls ahead. In terms of cross-platform synthetic benchmarks, there are a couple, not a whole lot, but still we have a couple of strong ones like Geekbench 3. The iPhone 5S scored 1363 for single core and 2404 for multi-core, here where higher numbers are better. And our HTC One scored 633 and 1787, so considerably slower despite the higher clock speed and the additional cores. Interesting that 3D Mark for the Ice Storm Extreme Test, which tests 3D graphics. On the HTC One, we scored 6,719 and demoed at 25.9 frames per second. Our iPhone 5S scored 9,951 and the demo ran at 47 frames per second. Big difference there. SunSpider JavaScript test. The HTC One came in at 1155 and in SunSpider JavaScript lower numbers are better and the iPhone did a phenomenal 422. Usually we don't spend a whole lot of time talking about the speakers on smartphones, but because the HEC One has the Boom Sound stereo speakers right here with Beats Audio, it beats every phone on the market, including the iPhone, which still has just a mono speaker that fires out of the bottom under one of these grills. So for those of you who actually listen to audio a lot while having no headset plugged in, no Bluetooth, no nothing else, keep that in mind. Really awesome, amazing loud speakers here. Now the iPhone gets pretty loud and sounds pretty clear, but not nearly as good as the HTC One. HTC One brings a couple of other bells and whistles, too. It has Wi-Fi 811AC versus just Wi-Fi 811N. I don't think that that's a point of great worth at, right now. Most people still have N networks, and that's plenty fast enough. Uh, and especially on a phone, the need for AC for inter-device transfers on your own network, well, 
you know, not that important. But the HTC does have NFC. It's still not a whole lot of things you can do out, out there with NFC. Often we see it embedded in Bluetooth devices to make pairing easier. You just have them together. Uh, you can use it with Windows if you're lucky. You transfer some URLs or some pictures. Beyond that, not too much going with NFC. Of course, there's mobile payments. Still not widespread adoption there. So, yeah, you know, Apple waits to see how a technology is doing before they actually invest in it and put it in a device. So, well, that I guess is why they're not doing it. Uh, but for those of you who love NFC, obviously just every top Android phone is going to have NFC. Also, our little power button up here is also an IR blaster for you use as a TV remote, AV home theater remote, not just your TV, your receiver, your DVD player, your Blu-ray player, all that kind of thing. And HTC actually works particularly well among all the Android phones that have that feature. It supports quite a large number of devices and it has a big IR window. So for those of you who think that's an exciting feature, you get it with your HTC. Obviously, no such thing built into the iPhone. However, there are third-party IR blasters that work with iPhones, so that is available as an accessory option. Well, we talk about accessories, by the way. Uh, for those of you who love to accessorize, that's still a selling point for the iPhone because, my God, you know how many accessories are out there for this thing. Everybody and their brother is making cases, speakers, everything. So if you want a clock radio for this, you have your choice. There are lightning port connectors now for things like clock radios. There are stereo speakers. There's a bazillion cases out there. There are those IR remote TV blasters, all sorts of things. Now, how about cameras? This is an important one. Both of these use oversized pixels in the imaging system of the camera. The HTC has even larger imaging sensor pixels. However, it has half the resolution. Our iPhone stays at 8 megapixels. Now, for those of you who need higher resolution images, say you want to print, you've got maybe your own commercial website or a WordPress website where you're not relying on just little Facebook size images, then the iPhone's going to pull ahead. With twice as much resolution, there's a whole lot more pixels. That means a lot more sharpness as you zoom in. Obviously, they can both take beautiful photos. Here, both of these were taken in good light. Lovely old Jaguar XKE over here. It's a sharp and colorful picture. It's just very good looking. And likewise, here we have a beautiful shot of a flower taken with the iPhone. Both of these have HDR. Of course, HTC has the Zoe feature, which is kind of fun and interesting. Four seconds of video montage through created from still pictures. Now, here we have two photos of the same fairly unexciting subject matter, but in a cave-like dark den. So first, we'll look at our iPhone here. Granted, smaller screens. See what I mean about bigger screens being nicer? But as we take a look at this picture... You can see that the colors, they're okay, but they're not zingy so much, are they? The, the red on the can for the Coke symbol is kind of mm, maybe a little bit too warm, a little bit, mm, you know. And we look at the HTC, we just got more image detail, don't we, right here? You can see things more clearly and more easily, not just because this is a bigger display on here, but because, well, it's actually just doing a better job of pulling out detail. In fact, you can even see things like my reflection right here in the Nexus 7 that's sitting on my desk. Pretty good there. You can see that on the iPhone too, but I don't think it stands out as clearly. Now, a second thing to pay attention to, and this is where the resolution is important, see the writing on the, on the Coke can here? As we zoom in, it's pretty much really not readable. It's just kind of like gibberish. Might be a little hard for you to tell on the video, but not distinct. It wouldn't be the easiest thing to read. Now, if we look at our iPhone and we zoom in, because we have twice the resolution here, I can actually clearly read what it says on the can. So in that way, it still does a better job in terms of resolution. And let's see if we can spot my face inside the Nexus reflection. Just barely. Just barely. So there you go. If you take a lot of shots in low light, that is, say, nightclubs, concerts at night, that kind of thing, I think the HTC one is going to serve you better unless you really need a whole lot of resolution. If you need resolution as well, you might think about the LG G2, which has a fantastic camera and does some very good post-processing to make things work. But in, in non-super low light settings, I would say that the iPhone camera is going to be the winner for the combination of resolution, the larger sensor size, and now they even both have things like color filters too. How about calling? Obviously, these, these both have very large, fairly simple dialers over here. The last person you called shows up on the top of the HTC One dialer. Otherwise, you both have both these give you access to your favorites, to your full contacts list, to your call history, to voicemail. Uh, which one has better call quality? They're both excellent. Both of these are top voice phones, both on AT and T, T-Mobile, and Verizon, where we've tested them. You're not going to go wrong. They're right up there with the Samsung Galaxy S4 as some of the the best call calling phones on the market today. 
Now, when, it, when you're using Bluetooth, I give the edge to the iPhone, which has really good compatibility with just about every car kit I've ever tested built in Bluetooth. Generally, audio quality is very good. Our HTC one is not quite as loud and clear, particularly I noticed with two different car built-in Bluetooth systems. It's not quite as loud, not quite as clear. When it comes to web browsing on a desktop site, here's our desktop site. You can figure out which is going to be easier to see. And just There's going to be more zooming that you have to do on the iPhone. Both of these have capable web browsers. You can download third-party web browsers to suit yourself right here. And both of these can play embedded HTML5 video as well. Now with Android, you can sideload Adobe Flash Player. Adobe stopped supporting Adobe Flash on Android quite some time ago, but it's still available as an archive from their website if you want to put it on there and use it with a web browser that supports it like Firefox or Boat Browser, WebKit web browser, but not Google Chrome. No Adobe Flash on the iPhone, not going to happen, never would. And now that Adobe is leaving the, the mobile OS market behind, clearly it's not going to happen in the future. Remember, first and foremost, it comes down to what size phone do you want? Do you think bigger is better? Well, HTC is going to be the winner here. Do you think pocketable and comfortable in your hand is important? Then the iPhone 5S is going to be the winner. And the second most important is which operating system do you prefer? I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website to read the review of both of these phones, watch our video reviews of these phones, and hit that like button.